Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for this webinar. Um, we are going to be walking through best programs for caregiving, uh, which has been updated. Um, I'll just mention a few things as we get started. Um, today's program will feature an introduction from Kathy Kelly, Executive Director of Family Caregiver Alliance. Next, David Bass, Senior Vice President and Senior Research Scientist at Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging, will share background on the resource. Then we'll have a walkthrough of best programs for caregiving um, led by Rachel Cannon, Senior Research Analyst at Benjamin Rose Institute on Aging. We'll then have a Q&A, and um, I will leave it there. I'm now happy to introduce Kathy Kelly, Executive Director of Family Caregiver Alliance. Hello, I'm Kathy Kelly, Executive Director of Family Caregiver Alliance, and I welcome you to this overview of the consumer version of best programs for caregiving, for caregivers. This version builds on the first effort, a question really, by David Bass, what if we could identify and catalog the evidence-based programs in use across the country? So a partnership was formed with Benjamin Rose Institute and the Family Caregiver Alliance to do just that, with the addition to develop search a searchable database that would help organizations select and use these programs in their community. The next step was a logical one. What if we could help family caregivers find and use these programs in their own communities or virtually to get the support and tools that they need. This is why we are here today to share the latest searchable database of these programs in use in the community and virtually to help family caregivers find and use programs that best suit their needs. Of course, none of this could be, have been done without the support from our funders, the John A. Hartford Foundation for their steadfast support and expertise in partnership with the Retirement Research Foundation, the Archstone Foundation, Sustainability Partner AARP, and with in-kind support from the Gerontological Society of America. With that, again, welcome, and I will turn to David Bass to kick off the program. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar. Next slide, please. We designed best programs for caregiving because when we started this work, there was no comprehensive updated source of information on evidence-based dementia caregiving programs. And we believe that a major advance in the field of aging and dementia care and services was the development, testing, and to some extent, the scaling in communities of evidence-based programs that help caregivers but there was no single source that where you could find descriptions of these programs. And if you were an organization and you were looking to start a program, there was, it was very difficult to find information on what would be the best match for your organization. It also was very difficult to find out how organizations that were doing one of these programs, um, how was it going? What were the experiences of the organizations? And we also knew that family and friend caregivers had a very difficult time finding proven programs that offer them support. And, and many, if not most caregivers had no idea that programs existed. Next slide. So Best Programs for Caregiving first launched in 2020. And it launched with 45 evidence-based dementia caregiving programs that we identified all of these programs had published beneficial outcomes in controlled research studies, and all of these programs had at least one real-world implementation by a healthcare or community organization. Now, the first version of Best Programs for Caregiving that we launched in 2020 was a professional version, meaning it really wasn't designed for family and friend caregivers to use. It was a tool for policymakers, researchers, funders, administrators, and most importantly, service organizations that were looking to start or considering the start of a caregiver support program. So it was a place where professionals could go to find very detailed information about these 45 programs, characteristics of the programs themselves, what the experiences were of other organizations that were offering these programs, 
and a synopsis of the research outcomes that were that formed the evidence base for these 45 programs. They also could find and still can find a link to all the published articles that were part of establishing the program's evidence base. So after launching successfully in 2020, the professional version, part of our work was to evaluate the user, how the user experience with that version was. And what we found were, was that many family and friend caregivers were actually coming to the professional side to learn about evidence-based available dementia care programs. But the one complaint they had was that they couldn't find whether those programs were available to them in their communities. And that's why we knew we needed a public version that they could go to. Next slide. So we're here today to talk about the launch of the version of best, pre best programs for caregiving for family and friend caregivers, which launched this April, just a, just a couple of months ago or weeks ago. And it is the first of its kind free directory designed for family and friend caregivers of people living with dementia. There are over 200 organizations, community organizations, healthcare organizations that are delivering one or more of the 45 evidence-based programs in best programs for caregiving. The public version that's now been launched has a place where family and friend caregivers can go or people looking to support family and friend caregivers can put their zip code in and find where, if any of these programs are available in their communities, and if they are available, where they're, where they're offered, how to enroll, and a number of other key features of the programs that caregivers or family members would want to know. Some of these pro programs are local programs that people can attend in person. Others are available to wider audiences and are delivered by telephone or online. There are actually 18 programs of the 45 programs and best programs for caregiving that are available nationally to caregivers. And those programs break down some of the barriers to underserved populations such as rural communities. The public version also pays special attention to programs that have been adapted or translated for diverse communities. And that's an additional feature that we've added to this website today. So that's a little bit of background on best programs for caregiving. Uh, next slide, please. And I'm going to pass to my colleague, Rachel Cannon, who's a senior research analyst at Benjamin Rose. Rachel? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for joining this demonstration of best programs for caregiving. So this here is our landing page at bpc.caregiver.org. And as you can see, you can access both versions that um, David and Kathy talked about here. Um, on the right, the version for professionals to find programs that are available to implement in their communities. Um, and on the left here, the version, the new public version for family and friend caregiver. So, I do wanna give a brief walkthrough of the professional version um, at the end of this demo, but really wanna to focus today on the, um, the new public version. So uh, caregivers looking for programs can click on I care for someone with dementia. Um, and at this point, um, that zip code search pops up. So you can see, you can enter a zip code in here Um, and there's a little tip here for caregivers. Um, long distance caregivers can search either by their own zip code or the person that they're caring for um, to look for available programs um, near them. And then click on view programs. And this is going to take us to the list of available programs in that zip code. So as David mentioned, um, this is going to include both in-person programs that might be available locally to that zip code, but it's also going to include programs that might be available online. Um, so it could be an organization delivering it in a different state or um, not really local to that zip code, but it will be available to those caregivers online. So both will appear in the, in the zip code search. Um, so just to give some examples here, um, you can see there's the, a list of programs. Um, 
here, Tailored Caregiver Assessment and Referral is the program name. Um, and that's also going to list the organization name. In this case, Elder Source is the organization delivering the program. Then we have a brief description of the program um, that really is the focus of the program, as well as the different ways or modes of delivery that the program's offered. So you can see this specific program is offered online, it can also be offered by telephone with some text or email and printed material components. Um, so just scrolling down for another example, the Savvy Caregiver, Savvy Caregiver Program is delivered by an area agency on aging. Again, you get that brief description. You can see this program is delivered or can be delivered in person or face to face. Um, so I just want to scroll down here to show you all just some, some different examples of the programs that are available within the zip code search that I did. Um, you might see sometimes the same program appearing twice. This is just because um, it's a there might be multiple organizations um, delivering that same program. So we saw above um, Savvy Caregiver was being delivered, um, also being delivered by this amazing place organization. So just scrolling down here a little bit more to show you all, there's quite a few different programs available with that brief description and available um, in different modes. So I do want to scroll back up to the top here. There is this filter programs or search bar above that you can use to find potentially maybe looking for programs that are available online. So if I type in online, I'll get that search for any program that might have an online component to it. You can see this list here. And then at any time a caregiver wants to learn a little bit more about the program, you can learn, use this learn more button. And this is going to take you to the program profile page where that additional information is going to be about the program. Again, you can get the program name, a brief description, and then some of the different types of help that the program provides with bullet, are bullet pointed here. You have the organization name and information and contact information on the side here in this yellow box. Um, there is also information about any cost that the program might have and whether or not financial assistance is available to caregivers who are trying to use the program. You can see this particular program, there is no cost to participate. If there are any eligibility requirements, those will be listed here as well. So you can see this specific program, um, the person with dementia that the caregiver is caring for must be 60 years of age or older and live at home with the caregiver. You will find the information on how to enroll in the program. So there might be a few different options here. Um, the phone number is listed, website, as well as an email, and you can link directly to those. You'll find the service region. So this is again, where the program is available. You can see this specific one is available in Florida in these counties listed. You will also get some additional program details here. Um, again, how that program is delivered, um, the program length and session length. This can sometimes vary depending on the program itself and whether or not it's tailored to specific caregiver needs. You can see this program is led by professionals. And you'll also get a link to the professional side for this specific program. So the professional version um, that I'll go through here in a little bit gives a little bit more detailed information about the types of assistance that the program provides, some more background information, and even the research um, that's been done on this program. So each one will be able to link back to that if caregivers do want to learn a little bit more about the program. Um, and as David mentioned, there is some additional information about the languages in diverse communities served. Um, so this program is offered in Spanish and you can see that they have served in one way or another um, several different diverse communities listed here and in different ways. So this um, table here really just shows how those different diverse communities have been served by this organization who, who is delivering this program. So that's just one example of a program profile. I do wanna scroll back up here. You can use this return to search bar at any time to go back to your list. I just wanna give one more example of a profile here, the Savvy Caregiver Program. If I click, click on learn more, again, you'll get that brief description, organization information over here and types of help the program provides. 
Um, again, you can see there's no, no cost to participate in this program, but there is some additional, um, some additional eligibility cr criteria. And again, you'll get that how to enroll, the phone number, email, website, if it's available, the service region and those program details. And you know that language and um, that language information will be available if it's there or if it will be there if it's available. Um, so that really is just a brief demo, brief walkthrough of how to use the um, consumer version. Do you want to quickly, by clicking um, Best Programs for Caregiving logo up top here, we can get back to our homepage and just quickly walk through the professional version. So um, professionals can click on I'm a program provider. This will take you to the homepage here where you can learn a little bit more about how to use the database, um, our partners, and about the project. But really by clicking on um, this box here, click here for programs, that's gonna take you to the search page. And this is where you can find a list of all of the um, programs and best programs for caregiving. Um, they're all listed here alphabetically. You can scroll through. Again, you'll get a brief description of the program and a little bit of background information. And at any time can click the learn more button. But just a couple of features of the professional version here, you can see we have the filter bar up top, but we also have several different filters on the side here for some different program characteristics and study findings. So just as, as an example, if you're looking for programs that can be delivered um, online or web-based, you can use that filter and see that it filters down to 20 programs. You can view all of those. You can, we also have a compare feature here where you can compare up to three programs at a time. And can, just can compare some different information about the program. Again, um, cost, background information, training that's available for your staff, um, as well as research evidence. I won't go through all of that, but, and again, you can click on see program to get to that comprehensive program profile. So this is the profile that um, I mentioned the, the public version links to if caregivers want to learn a little bit more about the program background. But this um, profile page really just has a ton of different program information. Um, you can learn more about the types of assistance that the program provides here in this table. Um, I won't go through all of it, but these drop down boxes here, you can see you'll have some different information about the research articles and studies that were done, as well as more information here on the side about who to contact to get manuals and training and other resources, as well as any um, articles, research articles that have been done on the program, links to those where, and where you can find those. So that really concludes um, the walkthrough of best programs for caregiving. So I'm going to um, pass it back to Al. Thank you, Rachel. So um, as you can see, this is a pretty robust resource and we're really excited to share it with all of you. And uh, we are planning to do a very public launch of BPC in the next month or so. And we'd really appreciate your help in spreading the word about it. Uh, we thank you for joining us today. And we've made it pretty easy for you and your organizations to help us get the word out there. We've put together a promotion toolkit that includes lots of great content for social media, newsletters, websites. And my colleague, Michelle Palmer, will be um, contacting you to share that toolkit and she'll be able to answer any questions that you have. So I'll just mention that now. Um, you'll be getting an email right after the webinar with lots of information and content that you can share. We're gonna move into the Q&A part of the program right now. I see that there are a few questions that came in. Um, let me just take a minute to, to review those. Um, let's see. Um, John um, Bowers asks, uh, what is the involvement of GSA in, in this resource? So um, I'm not sure if David or, uh, or Kathy would like to answer that question. I can take a first crack at that. Um, Katie Maslow is one of our collaborating lead partners on this project. And Katie was a visiting scholar at the Gerontological Society of America for the past several years and 
that's been the main involvement of GSA is working through Katie Massey. Okay, great. Thank you, David. Um, the next question comes to us um, from Tia. Uh, how would a business register to become part of the site and list their programs? I'll leave that open to anyone on the panel. Well, I'll, I'll take that one too. So the programs that are listed in Best Programs for Caregiving go through a review process to meet the eligibility. And as I mentioned in my presentation, there are 45 programs that have been approved by Best Programs for Caregiving. And those programs, some of them, almost all, are being delivered by organizations that have permission or license to do so. So when you go into the public side of Best Programs for Caregiving, organizations that are doing one or more of those 45 programs are the ones that are listed. And we are we would be thrilled to add more organizations that are doing one or more of those 45 programs. So if your organization is offering a Best Programs for Caregiving program, please get in touch with us. Um, you can do that via the link that was in the chat. And uh, we'd be thrilled to be able to add more organizations that are doing one or more of the 45 programs. I can also say that we're always adding more programs to those 45. So if you know of an evidence-based program that's been tested in research, that has published positive outcomes for caregivers, and that has been delivered as a regular service outside of a research study, in addition to having the research food, so please let us know about those programs. We, we want to keep adding more and more programs to this database. Okay, David, I think, um, I believe you answered that question. You, the mic cut out just a little bit, but um, I will move on to the next question, which is from Christy. How wide is the catchment area or search from a zip code? Would it pull programs from an entire state or a region of the state? Rachel, do you want to take that one? Sure. So it's going to pull programs that are available based on the organization's criteria um, for service regions. So if they if that program is available to you in your zip code, um, that program is going to appear. So it could be, again, a local program that's available to you in person based on your zip code, but it also could be um, the entire state if that program is offered to the entire state, or um, as David mentioned, nationally. So there's a few different things that, that could pop up there when you use the zip code search. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we have another question here. Have you considered putting the list in alpha order by name of the program? Also, I noticed that locally offered evidence-based programs are not listed. How did you get your info? So I'll leave that one uh, for the team. Uh, we are always, well, we are always looking to improve this new public version. Um, we are considering ways of displaying programs as a list. Uh, we may be adding that, so we will consider your comment and, and appreciate that comment. Um, programs that are not listed, uh, there could be multiple reasons. One, one reason would be they were not reviewed and approved for inclusion in best programs for caregiving yet. So again, if you have a program that might qualify, please let us know and there's a formal review process we go through. Uh, we were very careful about which programs we've added to the website from the very beginning. So it isn't an all-inclusive list. There are many very good programs out there that aren't in best pro programs for caregiving. But, but we think of this as an exclusive list of programs that have the research base, were done in real world settings in addition to the research and are available in communities. Back to you, Al. Yeah, great, thank you, David. 
Um, the next question is pretty straightforward. Will you be able to send the recording to refer back to or share with others who are not able to join today? Uh, we Our plan is to uh, share this recording once we have it linked online. You can also sign up for our newsletter and uh, Michelle will include that information. You know, as I mentioned, she will be communicating with everybody who attends today. And uh, we will highlight uh, the recording in our communications after this webinar. Um, that Those are the Q&As I see in the formal Q&A part of the webinar, but I want to make sure, um, Megan and others, if there are other questions that showed up in chat that we've addressed them. I'm just going to take a quick look. Yeah, we did have a question come in. Um, how are you marketing this to service providers for older adults like physicians, et cetera? Right, that's a great question. So uh, we're in the first part of our launch now in terms of our, our campaign. Uh, we had um, identified many organizations with uh, BPC early on. We continue to grow that list. Um, these uh, Those who are... Um, leading this resource and who've been involved with it from the very beginning, continue to give presentations and expanding our reach. Um, in terms of reaching healthcare organizations, that's always part of um, the target audience for us. Uh, we also continue to uh, get referrals from lots of people that we meet through conferences. Um, many of those um, on the call today offer presentations um, all the time. We were just at ASA, say, a month ago. Um, and every time we get out the door, especially with this version of BPC, uh, we're really targeting many more people, and we will continue to do so, especially as we uh, market directly to the public. So um, we're always open to hearing other ideas about target audiences. So. Um, that's where we are right now. Um, again, when you get an email from Michelle, if you have ideas about other organizations that we can reach, please let us know. We're happy to hear about them and uh, continue to share this great resource. Uh, we have another participant that uh, needs to unmute and go live to speak because they're living with dementia. Do you want me to go ahead and do that? Uh, sure. Yeah, it sounds good. All right, Thank so, you. Michael, I'm going to unmute you. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Michael. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for this. And this really sounds good, but I'm a little confused because as a person who's living with dementia, I've seen so many sites and it's so confusing out there, especially for caregivers. And you folks are claiming that this is a great resource. I just did a quick check and maybe I did it wrong, but I didn't see people like Naomi Felsen there, Tifa Snow some government sites that are doing some great things and places like the Metro Friendly America, which these are some key places that have great resources. Are th is there a reason why they're not there yet? Uh, I'll, I'll take that one. Yes, uh, they're, they're not there because they didn't meet, the programs that they're doing didn't meet the eligibility for inclusion in best programs for caregiving. But that doesn't mean they're not good programs, and it doesn't mean they don't provide a tremendous support and assistance. So this is a pretty narrow list of programs that are specifically uh, qualified from our point of view as evidence-based dementia caregiving programs that have been delivered outside of a research study along with having the research base. So it is certainly not all the sources of great sources of help. Um, so I encourage you to, to use all of those, and uh, but it won't have all the programs. And just a related question in the chat was whether where people could get a list of all 45 programs and best programs for caregiving. Um, the best way to get that would be to go to the professional side of best programs for caregiving, and it'll give you the list of all 45 programs when you ask to see the program profiles. And I might also mention uh, that Family Caregiver Alliance is a great resource for caregivers as well. And our partner in developing this website uh, 
has one of the most active sources of support for caregivers anywhere in the U.S. So I would encourage you to look for caregiver.org uh, as a site to go to for finding out about many other programs and sources of support for caregivers beyond what we have in best programs for caregivers. Thank you, David. Okay. Let's see if we have other questions in the chat and uh, Megan or anyone else can tell me if there's something that we haven't addressed yet. I don't see any more questions in the chat. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. All right. So um, I will right now just thank you all again for joining us today as i mentioned michelle palmer will be sending you an email with lots of content that you can share to get the word out about best programs for caregiving thank you again for joining us we appreciate it and uh keep an eye out for other news from bpc thank you again have a great day